Hi everyone. Uh, this is the first lecture on the course on uh, the introductory uh, the introductory course on circuit design. So one of the most important tasks for a circuit engineer is understanding the IV graphs. So especially now first I will discuss about two terminal devices. So these are the two terminal a uh, two terminal device is characterized by is completely characterized by an IV characteristics. So if I apply a voltage V across the two terminals, what is the current that's going to flow into the device or between the two terminals? Then the graph of I versus V tells us everything that we need to know about the device in question. So that's why it's very useful to be able to read an IV characteristic or IV graph. So shown here is an IV graph where it is shown here the current is increasing linearly with the applied voltage. Now because the current is increasing linearly, there is only one circuit element which will obey that property and that happens to be a resistor. So again we discussed the basics of Ohm's law in a previous course on the physics of semiconductor devices. So a resistor is a, is a circuit element which has this, uh, the voltage across the resistor is proportional to the current flowing through the resistor. And again the slope of this. IV graph. So here the slope of this is 1 by the resistance value. And there is one other important point which uh, we need to understand is most whether a two terminal device is an active device or a passive device. Generally most two terminal devices that we tend to use are passive devices. A passive device is a device which can only absorb power. So the definition of a power in a two terminal device is defined this way. Let V be the voltage across the two terminal device and I be the current flowing from the positive terminal, the positive the higher potential to the lower potential. Let I be the current flowing from the higher to the lower voltage. Then the product of V into I is defined as power. Now if this power is greater than zero, then we say the device is absorbing power, the two terminal device is absorbing power. And if this product is less than zero, then we say that the two terminal device is delivering power. In that case, the two terminal device will happen to be an active, an active element. So typically voltage sources can be an active element. Current sources, independent voltage and independent current sources can all be grouped under active elements because they have the power to deliver, I mean they, can, they have the capacity to deliver power um, to, to resistors. Or, or any or whatever circuit they are connected to, they can deliver power. So this is the four quadrant graph of power. So in the four quadrants, as one might see, in the first quadrant, the product of current into voltage, because both current and voltage are positive in the first quadrant, so power is greater than zero. Similarly, in the third quadrant, both current and voltage are negative, so the product of current into voltage is greater than zero. So for passive devices, the IV characteristics will lie either in the first, third, first or third quadrant or both or it can lie in both first and third quadrants. For an active device, that, that is a device which is capable of a two terminal device which is capable of delivering power, the IV characteristics will either lie in the second or in the fourth quadrant. Both in the second and the fourth quadrant, the product of voltage into current is less than zero. So therefore, if the IV characteristics lie in either third or fourth quadrants, in second or fourth quadrants, then we can say that the ter two terminal device is delivering power. So shown here is a device which has a characteristics like this. So which is nothing but the IV characteristics of a diode, a PN junction diode. So here the current increases exponentially with the applied voltage across it. And when the diode is reverse biased, it carries a current of current of value Is, which is the reverse saturation current. Now by looking at this graph, we can see for a diode, the IV characteristics lie either in the first or in the third quadrant. So therefore, we can say a diode is a passive device by this definition based on power. Now for a diode, um, one of the common um, misunderstandings or rather uh, uh, doubts that the students generally ask me is that a diode can be represented as a voltage source in uh, forward bias region 
is often times mathematically modeled as a voltage source in forward bias region now by definition a voltage source can supply current so if i have a voltage source of value vx connected across a resistance of value r then the current flowing through the circuit is given by vx by r now if you look at the resistor the power that's being absorbed by the resistor is all is is positive so the power is vx square by r so this is the power absorbed by the resistor now this is a fundamental i mean there is a fundamental rule which is the conservation of energy or conservation of power if resistor is absorbing power then there is some element which is delivering that power to the resistor and that element happens to be the voltage source we can very easily see that the current here vx by r is flowing from minus to plus terminal the direction is in this way so our definition for power for a two terminal device was that if the voltage is positive at this node and negative at this node meaning the voltage this node is at a higher voltage compared to this and if the current i is flowing in this direction then we define power as the product of v into i and we said that if the product v into i is less than 0 then the, the two terminal element is delivering power so in this example the voltage source vx if you see the current is flowing from minus to plus or uh, a lower potential lower voltage to a higher voltage as far as the voltage source is concerned or i can also say current is flowing away from the positive terminal so the product of voltage into current vx square by r is negative for the voltage source which means voltage source is delivering power and that power is fully absorbed by the resistor so by that definition a voltage source is an active device so often times we model diode as a voltage source then how is this model accurate now you have to understand that in this model where we represent a diode as a voltage source the direction of current is important a diode can carry current only in one direction it cannot carry current in the opposite direction so which means if i am going to model it as a voltage source the direction of current is always from plus to minus the positive terminal to the negative terminal it can never be the other way around for a voltage source to deliver power current has to flow in the opposite direction so because it's an voltage source a voltage source by definition can either deliver power or it can also absorb power a voltage source will absorb power if current flows from the positive to the negative terminal so that's why even though we model diode as a voltage source the voltage source even in that model it can only absorb power because the direction of current is fixed in a diode you cannot have a diode is a unidirectional the direction of current flow can only be in one direction from the p side to the n side or the uh, anode to the cathode of uh, of a diode so that's why even though we model it using a voltage source uh, we can very easily see that the iv characteristics for this ideal diode will always be in the first quadrant so that's why it's still a passive device so this is the iv characteristic of a pn junction diode with a cut in voltage of v gamma so v gamma is the cut in voltage here so now if you see the iv characteristic for an ideal diode is always in the first quadrant so it's still a passive device now you are given a characteristic of a device which looks like this so which is uh, the current is increasing linearly with the voltage but now the graph is entirely in the second and the fourth quadrant now in this case you can easily see that the slope is negative here so therefore i can say because its current is increasing linearly with the voltage it's a it's a resistor now because the slope is negative i'm going to call it as a negative resistor now this negative resistance is often times used in oscillator circuits uh, to actually compensate for um, the losses so most oscillatory systems that occur in nature or resonance systems or second order resonance systems which occur in nature tend to be lossy so you can imagine a pendulum um, a, a, pend a pendulum assuming there is some kind of uh, air friction so a pendulum will eventually come to so you initially give a displacement to the pendulum eventually the pendulum will come to rest if there is some finite air friction okay which will slowly dissipate the energy present in the uh, the pendulum system so most resonance systems you can imagine similarly we'll also have electronic oscillators periodic systems in elect electrical circuits as well these electronic oscillators will tend to be lossy will have some inherent losses 
to cancel out those losses we use negative resistors so we will discuss such circuits probably towards the end of this course or in the next uh, in the next level course so this is a negative resistor a negative resistor will always deliver power it's a two terminal device uh, and but we have to build a negative resistor using um, using some active elements so that's why negative resistance by itself is an active element because it can only deliver power so that's it about uh, this lecture on uh, yeah so that's it about this lecture on uh, uh, how to read an iv graph so in the next lecture we'll take some other examples of two terminal devices and those lectures are the lectures i have recorded in the regular class hour so i haven't uh, taken some separate time to record them so but these are the lectures that are uh, uh, i mean recorded in the regular lecture hour itself so thank you